All right, good evening, YouTube. This is going to be part two on the tarot, coming from, once again, the tarot Bible that I have. It's by Sarah, what is it? Yeah, Sarah Bartlett. All right. <clears throat> We're going to get right into it. Thank you to those who have subscribed to my channel. All right. Here we have, why use the tarot? All right. The tarot is an objective tool. It is objective. And in the pursuit of what self-analysis, the, invalu the invaluable benefit of this kind of divination for self-awareness is that the cards never lie. So we see here, okay, that um, tarot is uh, a form of divination. Of course, the fortune-telling image of tarot still exists. We talked about that in part one. And some of us really do want to know what our future holds. As long as we don't deny responsibility for our future choices by saying the cards decided for me, okay? In other words, regardless of what these cards say, we are responsible for ourselves, okay? We hold our to be accountable for our own lives, okay? It doesn't matter what the cards say. The power is within your own being, okay? To make choices for yourself and what you want to do for your life and how you, the direction that you choose for it to go. Then the, that the tarot somehow uncannily seems to describe patterns of behavior. Okay, so basically, it's showing you patterns of behavior that will lead to A, B, C, and D, whatever that may be. We are exactly what the tarot says we are. When you first start practicing with a card for the day, for example, you'll see how the card resonates to the energy, experiences, and events of your day. The irony, of course, is that the tarot reflects the questioner's state of being and only mirrors back to you what you already are, both unconsciously and consciously. Okay, and again, the theme consistently is about self. Okay, many people turn to the tarot for its archetypal and symbolic significance in their lives. It allows you the chance to truly develop your own choices there, develop your own choices and journey in life and to bring greater awareness to your sense of purpose, destiny or vocation. Tarot is one of the most powerful tools for developing what here we have again, self-awareness. It is timeless. Tarot inspires, creates, tarot inspires, creates pathways, gives guidance and makes a huge difference to the way you view life and deal with its challenges. It is a wonderful tool for self-analysis and self-improvement. Again, self. It is a wonderful tool for self-analysis and self-improvement. Tarot not only brings fresh insight into making choices and allows you to develop trust in your instincts and intuition. So it helps you, you know, to develop uh, trust in yourself, basically. All right. In your instincts and intuition. But it also opens up new horizons in relationships, career issues and personal fulfillment. Sometimes you can get a reading or do a reading on yourself and what comes out. You know, you find yourself kind of feeling like, you know, I, I, I knew that or this was just a confirmation of that. All right. Um, all right. By tapping into the energy of the moment, you are literally tapping your own psyche. It can also bring you closer to the spiritual and psychic side of your nature, how it works, how it works. All right. Here we are. The word divination is derived from the Latin divinus, meaning to be inspired by the gods. To divine is to foresee or foretell. Many cultures throughout the world and over the ages have foretold the future using anything from tossed twigs, coins, and tea leaves to patterns and puddles after the rain. We know cowrie shells, people will throw uh, cat bones, etc. The, the desire to know what will be is a very strong human drive, but we seem to have lost the awareness that there is something other, a connecting force that permeates all life and all existence. This connecting force includes the so-called random shuffling and choosing of the tarot cards. The belief that is casual, that the only valid connection between two events is that one caused the other is a modern scientific viewpoint, for example. The car broke down because I didn't take it to the garage when I was supposed to. There is, however, a far more ancient and universal belief that everything in the universe is interconnected and that events and patterns in the zodiac or the teacup in another person's life or anywhere on earth are all part of an invisible force. 
In other words, the randomness of divination is itself part of the process. The great 20th century Swiss psychologist Carl Jung coined the word synchronicity to describe such meaningful coincidences. He believed that the tarot card we select is prompted by something inner that needs to be expressed or must become manifest in the outer world at the moment. Okay, I'm going to read that again. He believed that the tarot card we select is prompted by something inner that needs to be expressed or must become manifest in the outer world at that moment. The seemingly random choice of cards at any one moment is a powerful signifier of the meaning of that moment. It is almost as if the cards pick you just as you pick the cards. We all project unconscious issues onto objects in the environment. We perceive reality through the tinted lens of our own nature, and we similarly project our own our inner issues onto each tarot card. Yet there is a message in every symbol and meaning behind every image in the tarot. In return, the card awakens us to the powerful patterns in human nature that gives us answers and solutions that we already unconsciously knew but, but didn't dare to believe possible. The tarot works because it plays the chords that resonate in your soul. It is the music of yourself. All right. All right. Here's a picture here. Carl Jung. All right. And some coins used for I King. Okay. I have a set of uh, I King uh, divination cards that I use. I did uh, one reading on here one time. Okay. A while ago. A few months back. Okay. An I King um uh, reading all right but this is another ancient divination technique <clears throat> a symbolic language the tarot is a symbolic language that draws on two symbolic sources one is numbers the other is images these archetypal symbols trigger profound feelings within us and connect us to timeless myths and collective dreams these ideas or deep-seated emotions need to be brought to life and carry within them many different layers of meaning for all of us. Roses, for example, have always been associated with love, corn with, uh, I mean, excuse me, corn with fertility and arrows with spirited vitality, symbolism, basically, symbolic language, okay? <clears throat> but roses have thorns and can hurt us in love. Corn sheaves eventually become dry and brittle as our fertile creativity can dry up. Take time to look closely at the symbolic images on every card. And if you want to find out more about number symbolism, read the sections on numerology, astrology, and the Kabbalah at the end of the book. We'll, we'll go get there, okay? But where is the symbolic pathway leading us? Is it a learning curve or a divination method for making choices? The answer is that the tarot is both. Every card tells a story about our own personal journey at any given moment of time. And our interpretation and association with the symbol expands the tale. We read the tar tarot as if we were reading a book. But like any language, it takes time to get to know it well. Okay, practice. All right, it takes time, right? Not overnight. In fact, there are no precise or exact meanings for every card or layout. Why? Because the language of the tarot is wonderfully rich in changes with you. And what do we know about change? It is the only constant. Symbolic meaning, you know, it's forever. We always, things change. We change. Our mind change. Everything changes. Symbolic associations. Association is a key theme on the tarot journey. We do this in everyday language without, without thinking about it. The word jug, for example, you'll immediately associate with a jug. But what kind of jug do you see in your mental or visual picture? Large, elliptical, long and narrow, squat, glass, ceramic, tin, colored, patterned, or highly decorative. We each have a different perception of the word jug, even though it is a common word. The, the, some of these themes here I, I covered in the religious study series, okay, especially on the earlier videos I did about what is religion, okay, before I got into the specific ones. Once you start working with word associations, you can see how important it is to work with symbols in this way too. So what about the word tarot itself? What associations do you make? Does it make you feel curious, wary, involved, fascinated, scared, or enriched? Take time to think what you project onto that word and why it conjures up various associations for you. Make a list and play with the ideas to discover more about the way 
association works and your own feelings about the tarot. Okay, we're gonna read this tarot as a mirror. The mirror analogy is the best one for understanding what you actually what you are actually doing when you read the tarot. Simply, you are reading you. Look in a mirror, in water, or in a shop window for a reflection of yourself. Obviously, you see yourself, but is it really you as others see you? <laughs> love that. I love that. <laughs> okay. Is it you as others see you? You don't know how others see you. I mean, even in the physical form, you only know how you see you. You can only see how you see you, not how others see you. Okay. Is your perception colored by what you want to see? The tarot, likewise, is a mirror, and your projections about love, life, hopes, and fears are cast onto the cards as they are on the glass of the mirror. What you are actually reading in conjunction with the apparent random choice of cards are all about those projections thrown back at you in a secret language, which you are going to learn to understand. As you begin to develop your ability to read the language of the cards, you also begin to connect to the archetypal themes and stories running through your own life with more objectivity. And I'm going to read it again. As you begin to develop your ability to read the language of the cards, you also begin to connect to the archetypal themes and stories running through your own life with more objectivity. Now try this exercise. Find a mirror. The one you use in the morning or a beautifully framed antique mirror that adds glamour, mystique, and charisma to the reflection, it frames you. First of all, you will see your physical self and the usual things you like about yourself, your eyes, your hair, the perfect nose, the wry smile. Or you immediately notice the awful things like the bad hair, the pasty complexion, sagging chin, puffy eyes, a spot. Some... Hmm... I'm missing the word here. Some of us see the positive attributes. Others see the negative simply because we are projecting good or bad onto what we see. You might color your reflection with fantasies of who you might be, or perhaps you camouflage your true features with other people's expe expectations of what is fashionable. Then again, you might be lucky enough to be objective and see through the color of your personal lens to the real you. The tarot is an objective mirror. Of course, you may still project onto the tarot cards your own issues, complexes, or hopes and fears. But the irony is that you can now see what they are um, revealed through the symbolic language of the tarot. Of course, sometimes you may not like what you see, but that's because the tarot is an objective mirror that always tells the truth. All right, here we begin to get into the deck okay and its structure all right um okay <clears throat> well, hold on all right the deck and its structure the tarot is made up of 22 cards called the Major Arcana, plus four suits of 14 cards called the Minor Arcana. Now, Arcana means secret or mysteries. Okay, excuse me. Secrets or mysteries. All right. The 22 major secret or mysteries, Arcana, represent profound archetypal qualities that permeate humanity collectively and on an individual level, okay? The 22, I'm gonna read it again. The 22 major arcana represent profound archetypal qualities that permeate humanity collectively and on an individual level. These qualities are represented by characters such as the emperor, the fool, or the high priestess, by several cosmic forces such as the sun and the moon, and by structures such as the tower, Tower, excuse me, the Wheel of Fortune and the Chariot. The other cards are the Magician, the Empress, the Hierophant, the Lovers, Strength, the Hermit, Justice, the Hangman, Death, Temperance, the Devil, the Star, Judgment, and the World. The 56 Minor Arcana represent events, people, behavior, ideas, activities, 
and activities that go on in our lives. When most of the cards are in, when most of the cards in any layout are major arcana cards, there is less likely to be an important issue that needs attention in the life of the person concerned. The issue may still be unconscious, but one that demands attention. If we choose a load of minor arcana cards, then is then it is likely that there is a very simple solution to a problem or that events will unfold quickly. We know what needs to be done or the events and experiences in our lives are simply showing us other aspects of what we are. The four suits of the minor arcana are numbered ace through to 10 of each suit plus four court cards rather than the three associated with normal playing cards. The four court Court cards are the king, queen, knight, and page. The page is sometimes called the knave, K-N-A-V-E. Note that some tarot decks also include a fifth court card. Ugh. Note that some tarot decks also include a fifth court card called the princess. The four suits are associated with the four elements. Okay. You have swords. This is a... Uh, Suit of swords. The sword is associated with air. The suit of wands is associated with fire. The suit of pentacles is associated with earth. And the suit of cups is associated with water. As in the mirror exercise, think, feel, and vis visualize and imagine how these associations work together. Okay. So, let me see. Uh, I don't want to get my whole deck out. I haven't separated them yet. Okay, but I'll just show you. Okay, these are, and I, I know it may not be the greatest. Maybe you can do a close-up. Okay, okay. These are the 22 major arcana cards. Okay, remember arcana means secrets or mysteries. I got notes from when I first started doing this. Okay, and some of these major arcana cards are associated with um, uh, a particular zodiac sign, but we'll get into that as time goes on. All right, now the minor arcana, once again, are, um, this is the minor arcana. Okay, you have four suits. Okay, um, again, swords. Let me see, this is the first one, swords, okay, which is associated with air, okay? Uh, and the key words, thought, information, connection, ideals, self-expression. That is what we have with the suit of swords. The suit of wands here at the bottom is associated with fire. The, the key words here are, uh, what is that? Intuition, vision, progress, individuality, success, failure. Here we have the suit of pentacles, okay? In some uh, decks, it may be called the uh, discs, suit of discs, or the suit of coins, okay? <clears throat> it is associated with earth. The key words, the senses, the senses, materialism, external reality, the tangible, okay, are pentacles, all right? And the fourth suit is the suit of cups or chalices. It is associated with water. You have keywords, emotions, feelings, relationships, love, and sex. All right. Now we're going to go over each individual card. All right. And way when I first started to help me remember these was when I thought about swords, air. You know, you hold a sword up, upwards, air, the mind, the mental space. Thought, information, connection, ideals, self-expression coming from the mind. That's how these are ways in which I um, uh, connections I made to help myself remember it. All right. Um, pentacles, pentacles, this coins, money, earthly things. This is how I was able to remember that. Here we have again the senses, materialism, the material world, the earthly world, this the, the earthly uh, realm external reality this outside of ourselves all right again the material realm and the tangible that that we can touch see taste smell so on and so forth pentacles all right uh chalices for the suit of chalices cups water 
you know, I don't even need to explain that. All right. This is how I was able to remember that, which deals with though the water in the cup, emotions, feelings, relationships. And I just, how did I make myself remember, help myself to remember that the connection I made was emotions, water. Okay. You know, water can be very peaceful. It can be turbulent, so on and so forth. That's how I was able to remember that. And which just left me with fire. Okay. Um, wands okay now one way i was able to remember it i really didn't have to do that much at that point because it was just what was left but um sticks in a way all right fire intuition vision pro progress individuality success failure i don't know i was just able to remember it probably because it was just the last thing left to remember the main two that i had to um I don't know, pretty much once I got the swords down, you know, that was easy. But these are things that I did, you know, when I when I started studying this to help me remember that remember it. Now there are different uh section here on different tarot decks. We don't need to go over those, okay? I will read this real quick, the writer weight deck, because I use that deck a lot. That's the deck that I started off with. That was what was recommended to me when I first started reading. I went to a store here that sells um tarot cards and I expressed my interest in uh, they are very experienced with reading to roll in the store, the owner. So that was what they recommended to me. And they said a lot of people start from that, that that is the recommendation. The Rider Waite deck, Dr. Arthur Edward Waite, 1857 to 1942, was a serious scholar of all things occult and believed that the true tarot is symbolism. There we go again. Under his strict supervision, Pamela Coleman Smith, a fellow member of the Order of the Golden Dawn, designed the 78 cards. This 19th century British occult group established by Samuel Mathers, William Woodman, and William Wynn Westcott attracted many prominent people of the time, including Waite, Edward Munch, August Strindberg, writer Haggard, Alistair Crowley, William Butler Yates, Bram Stoker, and many others. All the cards in this deck are completely pictorial, including the pip cards, and this precise imagery offers an immediate depth and accessibility to the meaning behind the cards. The pack was first issued. You will find it uh, um, many times. You, you can garner a lot just from the picture. <laughs> Basically, that's what's being said here. And you will sometimes listen to readers or hear readers and they will uh, pick up on the messages through sometimes, quite often, the pictures as opposed to just uh, the suit, okay, as opposed to just the card in and of itself. There's a lot of imagery there, a lot of symbolism in it. And sometimes you'll see something in it, depending on the energy that you're picking up on, sometimes you'll see something in that card that you never saw before that is relevant and resonates with that particular reading, Okay. Let's see. The pack was first issued in 1910, and since then there have been various reissues and copies. The authentic Waite Smith pack is known as the Rider Waite deck and reproduces the true colors and images of the original. The deck used in this book, the Universal Deck, stricts faithfully to the symbols, imageries, and colors of the early pack. And I'm going to read one more because I see uh, a lot of people use this. Uh, the Crawley or Toth. I always hope I'm like, am I saying that right? Toth de, uh, Tarot. Alistair Crawley, like many early 20th century occultists, acquired a bad reputation. However, this charismatic, extraordinary man created a wonderful tarot deck that was designed and painted during the Second World War, just a few years before his death in 1947. The imagery reflects Crawley's eclectic occultic philosophy, and like the Rider Weight pack, included both alchemical and astrological symbolism. Crawley worked closely with artist Frida Harris to embed the secret teaches of, teachings of the Order of the Golden Dawn into the card imagery too. The Toth or Crawley Tarot has been one of the most popular of the 20th century tarot decks. The colors, imagery, and geometrical symbolism make, make each card a work of art. The esoteric depth to these cards, however, can be more difficult to interpret. Crawley's pack differs from most decks in that he includes knight, prince, princess, and queen, mm, but no king. Isn't that interesting? Each of the numbered minor arcana card, minor arcana, arcana cards is titled with a key word. The major arcana is also radically different from the traditional decks with its 24 cards that include three magus cards. All right. All right. This is about the directory. Um, 
getting started, choosing a deck, getting to know the card, setting the scene, shuffling, letting go of projections. All right, I'll do this too. I'll read this. Um, let me see what time is it. Okay. All right, let's look. First things first, this is the getting started uh, section. If this is the first time you have thought about using the tarot, try to think about what you, why you are using it. Why did you pick up this book? Are you curious, frightened, alarmed, excited? Is it because you generally want to know more about yourself or to have some sense of control over your life? Is it to be prepared for the unexpected or to help you answer a question that you already know the answer to but never dared admit? Or is it to access the inner archetypal world and know how your inner world reacts with external circumstances? There are many motivations for using the tarot as there are people. You must be aware of your personal agenda and then with clarity and self-awareness, you can take the first step in your individual tarot journey. Pitfalls. There are a few things to watch out for as you embark on tarot reading. So you the, um, there are bullet points here. This first bullet point, wanting quick answers or taking shortcuts in life. Remember, issues may arise that may need deeper work with the tarot. Okay, and it is always wise to develop your tarot skills before making any hasty judgments or assumptions. Second bullet point, always interpreting each card the same way. This is the most difficult habit to kick. It's easy to get stuck with one keyword or interpretation because it's easy to remember. Liberate your imagination. Your life will flow better too. Third bullet point, being too subjective. You might be projecting what you want to happen onto the cards rather than the truth. This is the most difficult aspect of tarot reading for yourself because we always color what we see with who we are. Potentials. Here's, here are some of the things that tarot can do for you. Bullet point one, teach you emotional honesty. You will learn that with emotional honesty, you become more willing to live life and make positive choices rather than let it pass you by. Bullet point two, develop your ability to focus and develop your own intuition. Your intuition is there. You just need to let go of preconceived notions of how you should think and enjoy the interaction between you and your cards. Bullet point three, develop your trust in the cards as your personal guides. The more you practice, the more you will learn to trust. Bullet point four, show you that the tarot is the most revealing mirror of you. And bullet point five, help you discover that you are able to take control of your life. Choosing a deck. How do you choose a deck? You may uh, go get, choose a deck. And like I think I was saying in the first video, you know, it's, it's wrapped up. You can't really get in the cards and whatnot. And then you get home, you open the box and you see, hmm, this don't resonate with me at all. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. So choosing a deck. Nowadays, there are hundreds of specialized tarot packs associated with anything from themes of Atlantis to rock and roll. It's all a question of personal taste. But whether you are a beginner or a serious tarot student, you need to get to know the archetypal symbols and language through which the tarot speaks. Opt for one of the traditional packs, such as the Rider Waite, the Universal as used in this book, or the Marcel, Marcel or Mythic decks. It is easy these days to find decks over the internet, but to really get a feel of whatever the cards suit you, or perhaps more importantly, whether you suit the cards, it's better to find a shop where you can handle some example cards as well as see them. When you harness the energy of any given moment, it's not just the sixth sense you need to acknowledge, but the other five senses as well, so that all your senses are engaged in the moment to get you closer to what and who you really are. Caring for your pack. There are no rules, but treat the cards as you would your true friends. When you first take the cards out of a box, lay them out on a clean table and allow them to breathe, exuding their energy and taking in yours. Connect with them, touch them, pick them up, study them, take your time. Each time you use them, either return them to their box or wrap a silk scarf around them as protection from rogue energies or harmful sunlight. If you do a reading for someone who has very negative energies or issues, perform a cleansing ritual after the reading. Eventually, your cards will no longer be so new and pristine, and it's often the shabby old pack that you'll prefer for personal readings because it feels most trustworthy and holds so much of you within the substance, within its substance. You may, of course, 
like to invest in more than one deck so that a brand new one can be brought out for special occasions or for reading for friends. Okay. Getting to know the cards. The easiest and most traditional way to get to know the cards is to take one card for the day and study it. Create a story around it after reading its interpretation and try to weave yourself into the plot. However, with 78 cards, this method would take you 78 days. There is a quick, quicker way. Now let's look at what she says here. Step-by-step -step guide. This kind of exercise will help you become familiar with all of the cards fairly quickly, giving you an impression rather than in-depth knowledge, but it is a good place to start. One, separate the major arcana from the minor arcana, then lay the major arcana cards out in a line or in two rows and decide if any speak to you. Does one card seem to resonate with your mood? Do you feel it is trying to say something to you? Do you hate it, love it, or fear it? Does it make you feel inspired? frustrated or sad. Two, look up its complete interpretation to see whether it is relevant in any way to your life right now or what is lacking. Three, take out any cards that have this effect on you and get to know them first. One might be linked to your zodiac sign or it just might be that you love the imagery and don't know why. Four, look at the symbols on each card. Write down any that appeal to you, roses, lions, eagles, serpents, crowns. Then try a little free association by writing down whatever comes into your head as you gaze at the image or symbol. Five, keep a tarot journal of these thoughts and associations as you start to learn about the cards. Six, next, work with the cards you don't particularly, particularly like or don't really understand. For example, some people can't identify with the magician. Try to relate the card to your life now. Is there a magician in your midst? Do you have too many illusions or fear the unknown? Seven, getting to know the minor arcana is a little trickier. First, read about what each suit represents and then learn about the court cards. You'll find the number cards interpretations will follow quite naturally. Decide which suit you like best and why. Eight, choose a court card. Does it reflect you or a friend? Choose a number. Is it meaningful for you right now? What does the image conjure up in your mind? Stretch your imagination. Who are the kings and queens in your life? Who are the pages and knights? Do you identify with their qualities? All right, that's just one way. All right. Woo. I'm going to read all this right now. <laughs> Let's see. What time is it? 4.42. Okay. This is 30 minutes. I think that's enough of the time being. Okay. You don't want to overwhelm people. Okay. Especially when you read, just reading. So we will, uh, part two, we'll get to setting the scene, shuffling techniques, drawing and choosing cards, letting go of projections. What to ask? Intuition and association and your first reading, develop your interpretation skills. Yes or no? I may not do, do all this. Okay. But I might. All right. We shall see. All right. You all be blessed. Thank you so much. Again, thank you to those who have subscribed to my channel. Um, if this is your first time watching a video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, all right? So I can get some, uh, well, they say they help your algorithm, so on and so forth. I hope that uh, you all appreciate this, and I hope that this will be um, of some benefit to you. You all be blessed. Peace.